Right. I am going to make a Teemo tier list video really quickly. I'm just going to slot champions into very hard, hard, medium, easy, or very easy in terms of the Teemo matchup and my opinion on it. I don't want this to take really fucking long, so I'm probably just going to give like a little 30 second spiel. So um, let's get started. I think Aatrox is a difficult matchup. I don't think it's impossible. I think his sustain is good. I think his combo is difficult to avoid. I think it does a lot of damage when you get hit by it. I think when he ults, his healing is kind of through the roof. But you can win it if you play aggressive enough early. I'm going to put a Kali in the heart also. Her sustain with Fleet and Doran Shield and Second Wind and everything is really good. And it's able to get her past those levels 1 through 5. Just, just 30 seconds for the top laners. And her level 6 all in and the ability to take Ignite on her makes her like miserable to deal with after level 6. Anivia is impossible to beat. Your only chance to beat Anivia is like level 3. Once she hits 6, she's either going to freeze the wave on you, and every time you walk up, she's going to put you in ult, land every ability on you because you're slowed and you don't get to play the game, or she just shoves every single wave with ult and you have to farm under tower for the rest of the game. I think if you think somebody's playing Anivia top, should go into like panic mode, maybe dodge. Somebody picks Annie top, and a lot of people will do that against Teemo. It's not quite as bad as Anivia, but you get outranged, you get outbursted, you kind of get outpushed. It's kind of like a back and forth on who can push the other person. It's like Annie has AoE abilities and Q is always up, and then once you hit six, you get shrooms. I think if you get the jump on her, and she doesn't have stun up, you can win out on a trade, and if you do that enough times, you can probably win the matchup. But if you don't buy MR against Annie, she's gonna fucking kill your ass. So she's pretty difficult. I think the Camille lane is Teemo favored. I think all of her abilities are really projected. You can get good blinds off on her Qs, and that's like a huge portion of her damage. After you get boots and a point in W, it's pretty easy to avoid her W, which is her only real way of doing damage to you. Her sustain is pretty high, because a lot of times they'll go grasp, take Doran Shield, take Second Wind. All that shit, but all in all, I think it's pretty Teemo favored. Cassiopeia, very hard. Almost every Teemo player knows that Cassiopeia is a really fucking miserable lane. The only way you can beat Cassiopeia is early, and you have to make sure you don't get hit by any of her Qs, because the moment you get hit by one of her Qs, her E's will do a fuckload of damage to you, and she'll way out DPS you. Also, when she's six, she's really hard to play against, because not only do you have to dodge her Qs, but you have to be able to turn around for her ult. If you fuck anything up, you're going to die. Chose pretty easy, I think. You just gotta dodge his Q. Get some movement speed. If you get hit by Q, it's gonna be really, really bad. But, you know, as a swift scout, you should be able to dodge those bitches. And, like, he's gonna be tanky, but he's not actually that tanky. Press the attack, you can definitely kill him. But Darius and medium. Darius is all about where the lane is. Because Darius's are gonna take Flash Ghost. And if you're pushed up and Darius is not low, he can pop Ghost and run you down. And you're guaranteed to lose out because he's going to get on top of you and there's no way you're going to beat Darius in melee range. However, Darius' wave clear isn't the best and he's really short ranged. So if you post the wave up on your side, his Ghost is useless and he can't really do anything to you. So if you want to learn the Darius matchup, I think you just need to learn some wave management and then you should be good. Mundo is pretty easy, I think. It's just a farm matchup. Oblivion Orb has like lost a lot of value ever since the Mundo buffs, I think, so I wouldn't rush it. But I would go Cole cut down, just farm it up. You can't really kill him if he just like plays across the map throwing cleavers at the wave. Yeah, this will go on YouTube. I'm just gonna try to bust this out really quick. Um Fiora, I think, is a pretty medium matchup. I think the main part of the Fiora matchup is you have to dodge Fiora's W. If you get hit by Fiora's W, you're going to lose. And if you get really behind in the lane, she probably doesn't need to land it, but you probably won't get behind if you don't get hit by Ws in the first place. Her wave clear is really, really bad, and she can't really set up ganks super well. She can just have a lot of kill threat with ult. I think new GP is okay. I think before, GP was like super fucking miserable because his grass proc did a gazillion damage, but now it's not so bad. I think you can out-trade GP with an auto and a Q if he goes up to Q you and grass proc you. Gangplank's also really hard, so a lot of Gangplanks, you can contest their barrels, but if they're really good at Gangplank and they have their barrel timings down, you kind of have to just like respect the fact that he's sitting on a barrel and he can combo you, 
and then it just kind of devolves into like a little bit of a farmland. But you can always cheese gangplank. Like if he hits a shroom and you're stealth there, like you're gonna win out super hard. Garen's like the easiest matchup on the planet. Don't lose to Garen. Uh, I, I think I like medium for Nar. Cause like when he's a little Nar, the lane is super free. But when he goes into Mega Nar, if you don't respect the fuck out of that, like really bad things can happen. He can set up ganks super well. He can probably just kill you by himself if he's Mega Nar and you're not respecting it. But then again, when he's a little Nar, you have so much agency to do whatever you want. You just have to make sure you're not getting hit by Qs that don't hit creeps first over and over again. So it's like really like a swing of like when he's little, you have to take control and do good things. And when he's big, you have to just back off, like really back off and like respect the space. Um, for the Garen Flash Q Ignite ER, any tips? I have not seen that happen. There's a mushroom out there with your name life, on it. Chilling. What's up, Pubes? Thank you. Well, let's let's keep going. I'll try to answer questions afterwards because I don't want to like have it slow down the tier list, I guess. I really don't like playing as Gragas. I think Gragas is an all-around better version of Malphite. I think his sustain on his passive makes it really good. You can't walk up to him in the wave because he's going to cue you in the wave, which he wants. You can't walk up to him out of the wave because he's going to body slam you and hit you with W and then run away. Um, once he hits 6, his gank setup is super good. His damage is high. He has like no mana costs because he buys tier. I think your only chance is to sidestep a body slam and just DPS him down. Because he's not that tanky. But if you're trying to poke him out, it's not going to work out. Um, I'll put Graves in. Even I've only played against it a few times. But it's kind of always just been a farm lane. He doesn't really have any kill pressure on you. Your blind fucks him over super hard. He's short range so you can like get harassed and his sustain isn't really crazy. I think the Gwen matchup is Teemo favored. But I don't think it's as, as easy as Garen. I think with Gwen, her level 6, level 6 all in it is pretty strong. And if you're not watching out for that, you can just get ghosted and round down with 6. But besides that, I think Teemo should win out. Blind fucks her super hard. If you get the auto off before she puts W down, the dot still goes off. You know, like she's short range. You can run her onto shrooms. I think he's a, pr a pretty good lane. Um, Heimerdinger, put in medium. Can't really, you can't really play aggressive for Heimer. Because if you do, you're going to like walk up into turret range. He's going to like hit you with E's and W's. The turrets are going to do their little ability on you. But the flip side of Heimer is that he's super squishy. So if he uses like abilities on the wave, or if he whiffs abilities on you, or if you've been able to like kill his turrets or something, you can definitely kill him. Um, go on to Lowey. I don't see a lot of these, but I want to put her somewhere in easier medium. I think we'll just go with easy. The only thing with Alawi is if you get grabbed and she like grabs your spirit or whatever, there's no way you're going to win. But that should never happen, really. So as long as you're like not allowing Alawi to grab your spirit, then the only thing you have to watch out for is her Qs, which are like kind of difficult to dodge. And they do like, they have a really good AoE for the wave, that like rectangle AoE, and it does like quite a bit of damage and it heals her. So if you can be good about your movement and dodge those, you can definitely um, get a lot of pressure in the lane and maybe go for a dive or something later on. Just don't get grabbed by her spirit. Put Irelia in hard. I don't think that the Irelia lane is like absolutely impossible. I think if you respect Irelia and her stacks, then you can win this matchup. If she has full stacks up, you're going to lose. She can just Q on you and miss everything and still kill you. But if she doesn't have stacks up, and you're able to sidestep her E, she can't win. Also, bone plating is apparently broken against Irelia. And it makes the matchup like way easier. So if you're having a tough time, take bone plating. But by the way, these are not ranked left to right. I'm I'm not gonna fucking rank them left to right. That'd be some psycho shit. Um, I think Jax is almost probably a harder version of Irelia. I think the Jax lane comes down to controlling the wave and freezing it. If you don't freeze the wave against Jax, I think you're gonna lose. Jax is one of the champions I'd recommend taking grasp against because I have a I have a really bad time against Jax if I don't have grasp. Like, taking PTA against Jax just doesn't seem right because of his Counter-Strike, so... I don't know, I would try to freeze the wave and go grasp against Jax. Jace is hard. Jace has better wave clear. He has all of his abilities that he can run on you. Like, you can dodge his EQ in range form, right? But it's like QWE in hammer form. If you get hit by that, you're gonna take, like, half of your life. You can't dodge that. He just fucking clicks on you. Um, I think the only thing is Jace is early. He has mana issues. So he doesn't want to actually go hammer form and use hammer abilities on you. So you can play around that and try to contest his last hits on creeps. 
And also, if he hits a shroom and you're stealth on it, you win out. I'll put Karma in. Karma's kind of just a farm lane. He doesn't really have any kill pressure on you either, so like, you're never going to kill her. And she shouldn't kill you unless you stay after getting harassed down. But as Teemo, you should be able to just take a base, lose some creeps on the tower, and get back to lane quickly full life. And if you do that, like, you'll get behind on creeps. But Karma's scaling is dog shit. So, like, feel free to give up some last hits if you got poked out. Not die to her. Dying is the worst thing you can do. I think the Kale matchup is really easy. She's too weak early. Her, like, level 6 to 11 is still not very strong. For, like, 11 and on, it can be, like, problematic. But it's not really super bad for Teemo because all of her damage is on her, on her auto attacks until she gets a lot of AP for her ult. And even then, when she, like... If she ults to wear out your blind, you just run away. And you got her ult for free. And it's a long cooldown. I think if you get behind somehow, maybe like die to like a couple of ganks, die to a couple of ganks, and she goes wit's end first, maybe it can be a tough matchup. But I really can't see a world where like Teemo has problems with Kayla at any point in the game. Uh, Kennen's really difficult, I think. I think Kennen's a difficult matchup. I don't think he's the worst. But he outranges you a little bit. He has pretty good wave clear when you're not around. But he can't really E the wave if you're around. His level 6 on is super good and it's super easy to execute. So I guess against Kennen, I would just recommend going for the Verdant Barrier and get some MR really quick. And then he can't one-shot you at level 6. And then besides that, it's just a farm lane. So at 6, you can just drop a Shroom on every wave, shove it, dip, maybe go take Gromp or Krugs or something, go mid. But he shouldn't be able to kill you if you have MR and you guys are even. So one of the things about Kled is that you always take cut down against Kled because his like weird HP bar thing with his passive it gives him like a lot more HP than the normal champion. So I recommend going cut down cool cool against Kled. And then besides that, you get hit by his EQ. You just need to time your blind well about his his W. You don't want to get hit by the last auto on his W. I put him in a medium because like when you get ahead, Kled can't really do anything. But if you get behind against Kled, like if he hits two first because you leashed or something, and he EQs you, and he just like slaps the shit out of you, then if, maybe if you get like tower dove by him and his jungler or something, and you get behind against Kled, the matchup is miserable. And it's super difficult to play. But it's the same way the other way around. If you get ahead, then he has like no kill pressure on you, and you can just slap the shit out of him the entire game. I played against Lilia a few times couple different people. I thought it was easy both times. I think her range is just too low, and she's too squishy. She has this like, weird thing where she's like low range, and she wants to use abilities on the wave, but then you hit her with like an auto Q auto, she like can't take those super well. So even if she outpushes you a couple times, if you get damage on her, just last it on the tower, like you're going to force her out of lane, and eventually like all those forces out of lane are going to add up, and you're going to get ahead. She also doesn't do enough damage to burst you with 6, and you can just out DPS her. That's my experience, at least. But I haven't seen her a lot. I'll put Lucian in. I think Lucian's difficult. I think he has too much agency. I think his Q is really hard to react to. It's about more about him missing it than you dodging it, in my opinion. Um, I think his level 6 is like W, Cole. does a lot of damage, and it's hard to avoid because you don't have any dashes. I think the only good thing about this matchup is if you're posted up on a Shroom. Like a lot of them, if he hits the Shroom and he's in range, you can pop out a stealth and probably burst him because he is pretty squishy. I think Lulu is disastrous to play against. I think her wave clear is good. She outranges you. Her abilities are impossible to miss if she EQs you. She can turn you into squirrel if you pop out on her. You're never going to kill her because she has ult. I think the only way to play against Lulu is cheese her level 1. And if it doesn't work out well, you're going to be under your tower farming the best you can for the entirety of the game. You're never going to kill her. You're never going to kill her teammates if she's around just miserable i think she's a better version of karma and i really really think she's like one of the worst the malphite and easy well, there's two versions of malphite there's a tank malphite and there's an ap malphite if the guy's going tank you can just put a shroom on the wave arch of every wave face tank a q or two they're not going to do damage if he's going tank and you just recall after shoving a wave get your life back buy your like next amp tome or dagger or whatever roll it back to lane and just do that over and over again also, he can, he'll probably go oom if he's going tank, and you can harass him under tower super easily. You just have to make sure you don't get ulted under the tower. With the AP version, it's basically the same thing. You just have a little bit more to watch out for. So if he's going AP Malphite, 
I would do the exact same thing. I'd toss a shroom on every wave, hard shove it. He walks up to cue me. His cues are going to do a lot more this time, right? But you can still just base after like every wave or two because you shove them so fast with shrooms. You have a shroom up for every single wave. So I don't think Malphite ever has any kill pressure on you. And if he walks up to Q you and you feel like trying to harass him and he's going AP, that shit will do a lot of damage and it'll rack up. The only thing you got to worry about Malphite is if you're getting ganked. But there's no way a Malphite should solo, Q, solo kill you regardless if he's going AP or not. Maokai is easy. You can space him right. Your auto attack range is longer than his W. So if you space him right, it goes really well. And even if W is on top of you, he's directly on top of you. You put a shroom down, hit him with blind. You're going to out DPS him. The only thing Maokai has going is he has a really good gank setup. So don't get, don't die to his ganks. Don't get behind. And there's no way Malphite can do anything to you by himself. I think the Mordekaiser matchup is pretty easy. I think the only thing you have to do is dodge his E. As long as you don't get hit by Mordekaiser's E, you're fine. A lot of people think you need to rush QSS against Mordekaiser, but like I really don't get that. I think just rushing boots too is good enough. Survival ain't pretty. Because like he's never gonna walk up and just land ult on you, right? Because that shit's way short ranged. So he has to E you to drag you into his ult range. You just never get hit by the E, then you're chilling. I think Nasus is one of the worst champions in the game, and therefore I think he's one of the easiest matchups for Teemo. I think if he goes Q Max, he's never gonna be able to do damage to you, he's never gonna get on top of you. And if he goes E max, he just E's the wave every single time, and he's not stacking, and he's not doing what he wants. The only thing you gotta watch out for with Nasus is if he's level 6, and he walks up and presses W on you, you're gonna lose the 1v1. Like, you can't beat Nasus 1v1, unless he's really, really behind. So just don't let that happen. If he's farming on his tower, after you shoved it or whatever, and you're worried about getting hit by, like, W and him ghosting at you, just like go fuck off and like farm your jungle camps or go mid or something. He's just gonna dick off in a side lane the entire game and be useless later on. Nocturne's kinda like Kled, I think, where if you get behind, it can be kinda miserable. But if you should be ahead, like in the early levels, as long as you don't walk into a bush that he's in or something, he can't really get on top of you. He has pretty good sustain with his passive and his corrupting pot that he'll buy. But as long as you're not like giga behind, I think it's fine. If you do get behind and he's 6, he can just ult you whenever he wants and kill you. But if you're ahead, he can't really do that because you, he just ults, you put a shroom down, stand on it, and then when he takes his ult to you, he either gets hit by the shroom and spell shields your blind, in which case you just run away, or he does the opposite and spell shields the shroom and then gets hit by the blind and then he's not auto attacking you. The only like situation where it's bad is if he's like able to wait out your blind and your shroom and stay on top of you and get the fear off, then you're probably going to lose out. But you should be close enough to your tower to get away if you're losing, and if you're winning, you can probably just straight up 1v1 and if that shit happens. I think Orin can be kind of difficult, because most Orins take Spellbook, and then with 6, and they swap their Spellbook to Ignite, they actually have like quite a lot of kill pressure on you. If you get knocked up, you're gonna fucking lose, and you're not going to be able to move. But that being said, most of the time I think it's just a farm lane, and you try to harass them out, you just gotta like be careful for his like QE, but his Q is is pretty difficult to land. I think as long as you're decent with the sh movement and you don't get hit by like a couple Qs in a row, and get whittled down a little bit for that all in, I think you're chilling. He does scale well though, like giving other people items and stuff, and his team fighting is really strong. But in the lane, I think he's not too difficult. I think the new Pantheon is easy. I think the only thing you gotta watch out for with this Pantheon is when he wants to W you. You just gotta get your Q off before he uses W. He's not really going to use like the little spears where he like charges them up and throws them at you over and over again. And those are like impossible to land anyways. But he's never going to really just like ult on top of you. The only way you lose this is like if he gets roams off and gets fed off roams. So when he hits six, just like spam ping your teammates and tell them to watch the fuck out. I think Poppy is really, really easy. Her range is too small. You should never be caught by any walls. Like her W is just useless against you. Her ult's basically useless in the lane. Like, she's never going to just walk up and kill you, right? She has to use E first. Like, she might get a passive proc or two on you if you're not paying attention to it. But she's probably not getting passive up on you. Like, you're just going to shove her the entire game and harass her. Not many people play Quinn, and she's not very strong. But I think she's, like, a worse version of Lucian. Where it's kind of like, you don't want to play aggressive in a Quinn. Because you're going to get hit by, like, E's and Q's and stuff. But then Quinn isn't going to really, like, play aggressive into you. Because she's going to get hit by, like, autos and blinds. So it's just going to kind of devolve into like both of you hitting the creeps with autos the entire time. And then that's just a farm lane. 
I have not played against a nerfed Renekton, probably because it's unplayable. I'm going to put it into easy. I think Renekton jumping on you is like way too projected. The blind is pretty good against it. He's still going to hit you with like an E and a Q or whatever. But you can blind his W. His abilities are really long cooldown. His sustain isn't anything crazy and you have to hit creeps to get it off. I would just watch out for like random level 6 all in or something. Because if you're like barely ahead, maybe up like 10 last hits, if you're up like 10 last hits and you guys like both get back to lane and you're level 6 and he just like pops all of his abilities, ults, and like sits on top of you, I think you're going to lose out. But besides that, you should be fine. I think Rengar top can be difficult. I think you just got to respect the bushes. I mean, it feels fucking shitty, but like let's say the lane starts, it's level 1, and he starts jumping on creeps. Just let him jump on creeps. He's going to push the wave by jumping on the creeps. You just got to wait it out. Get EXP. Don't let Rengar jump on you with stacks up or a level advantage. You can bounce the wave back. And if you have Rengar under tower, just keep him under tower and keep him hard shoved. Rengar can't do anything unless he's able to use the bushes. Go to the next one, Riven. I think Riven is difficult. I think Riven players, they take Ignite. They take the Magic Shield and Sorcery Tree. I think they have like so much sustain because they'll take Doran shield they can eat your damage it's like so difficult to whistle a riven down and harass her out of the lane but still if you like overstep even if she's not six she's going to jump on you and slap the shit out of you and if she is six it's going to go miserable too i think it's riven this is one of the matchups where you basically have to take grasp for the next one rumble i think is hard i think anybody who's resourceless with a shield is pretty difficult generally and Rumble has basically no resources. You get hit by E, you, he slows you forever. He's going to hit you with all of his Q. He's going to do a fuck ton of damage with you. His level 6 all-in is super good. I think you can cheese out kills on him if you pop out of stealth. And I think you win later on 1v1 if you're not super behind. But I think for in lane, I think his shield makes it too difficult for you to harass him out. And then his Q clipping creeps and killing you makes it too difficult for you to shove him. So I think it's a tough lane. The next one, Rise, a tough lane. I don't think Rise is very hard levels of difficult because I think it, at its worst, Rise is just a farm lane where he's going to shove you under tower and you're going to do your best to last hit under tower and dodge some Qs. But he doesn't actually have kill pressure on you. So it's kind of like Karma and Lulu where like they're just going to shove you and you're going to do your best to farm and you're going to have to take shitty bases every once in a while. The problem with Rise is that he scales super well also. So it feels bad to lose against Rise and lane. But you can play aggressive in the early levels and maybe cheese out a kill or two. And if you like are stealth on a shroom and he hits it, you can kill him then also. I played against some Sinjuani tops. Put her in. I think she's going to be pretty tough. I think she's really tanky. I think she has so much fucking CC. She's going to rush the chains thing. So she's going to rush chains, have chains done probably before you have an item done. And then it makes it really difficult for you to walk up because you're not going to want to fight against Sinjuani after she has chains on you. And she's, like, she's going to reduce your tenacity and everything. Her gank setup is really strong. But then again, if she doesn't get help by anybody, you're just going to like wheedle her down because she's not in a role that she's supposed to be in. I don't know. I think Set's a really easy matchup. He should never be getting E's off. And even if he does manage to get an E off, you can buffer your Q on his E. So he grabs you and you get the blinds off. The only like difficult part about Set is that he has like insane HP regen when he gets low and he has a shield after you hit him with a couple stuff. So like you're not really going to have the most kill threat on set but from my experience if set all ends you you win the all in because you just kite the shit out of him so easy and it's pretty difficult for him to actually land like the good portion of his w but i think all in all like set is a pretty easy matchup you should not be worried about it shen really easy you're just going to be like bullying him the entire time you're just going to be like hitting him with autos the entire time he's going to be making shields and putting down his little like auto dodge zone or whatever but most of the time, it's not too bad. If you get hit by a taunt under tower, you're going to take a lot of health or lose. So just like make sure that doesn't happen. Most of the time, when Shen hits 6, he's going to like bolt somewhere. Just like ping his bolt out, tell your teammates Shen is 6, and just like have wave shoved. So when he does ult somewhere, you get tower plates and you get something out of it. Singe like the easiest matchup in the game for Teemo. Nothing Singe can do. Like Singe runs at you, you run away, he puts down W, you just run away. I can't really say anything else more about Singe. Like, you should not be losing to Singe unless it's Surge has. And even then, you're probably not going to lose to Singe. Scion, I'm going to put in medium. I think you have a kill pressure on Scion if he oversteps. 
But if he plays it passively, like you're probably never going to kill him. And then he has pretty good gank setup. And if you happen to get hit by an E, which is going to happen eventually, probably, like you're not going to be able to get away from his Q. So you're just going to have to like sit there and auto attack him inside the Q. And then you get knocked up by the Q. And that's like even more CC. That's like another two seconds of CC. If he wants to ult you, he can. He's going to hit you with ult. Shield's going to go off. It's basically just a farm lane. I would recommend just like hitting six, putting a shroom on every wave, hard shoving it, and then going to take jungle camps or going mid or something. I think Silas is easy. I think his range is too low. I think it's too easy to dodge the second portion of his Q. I think the fact that he has to jump on you to do damage in the middle of a wave is good for you because you out DPS him after his rotation. He like ease in, hits you with W, you're in the wave. It's difficult for him to land the second part of his E because he doesn't want to clip, clip a creep. He presses W on you or whatever, presses Q on you. You just get to you just get to DPS him down this entire time, and then he's got to walk away. Then you just like kite towards him. Survival if you get behind, free. if you get behind, it can go bad. But if you're not like super behind against Silas, you win that trade, and I think you win the matchup because of it. Oh, the the annoying thing about the frog is it feels like the damage you do to him is pointless. I think the frog will never kill you. You should never be getting hit by his Qs. His W is super telegraphed. You should never be getting hit by his W. Then his E just helps him sustain. Then his ult is only for grabbing you and putting you under the tower. But you have to he has to hit other shit on you to ult you. So he should never be ulting you either. Like the only times that the Kench lane has gone bad for me is when I've like tried to harass him under tower when there's only like a creep or something left and I happen to get hit by a Q, and then he lands W on me. But it's so difficult for him to hit abilities on you. That I think at the its worst, it's a farm matchup. But if you do get behind his Kench, he's just gonna run at you in the middle of the wave, and it's gonna feel fucking brutal. I think Trinomir is overtuned right now. I think that his healing is broken. I think that he's like so brainless to play. His like little slow auto attack reducing thing is actually super impactful. I think he just takes Ghost and runs you down. I think that against Trinomir, you should rush Azonias. That's the way that I deal with him. I start Q, if he spins on me, I Q him, run away, you know he's going to push the wave, because he needs to auto attack for his passive, and he has spin, which is going to clip the creeps. Just rush Zonia's, if he Survival tries to jump on you, pretty. just fight him, get his ult out, pop Zonia's during his ult, wait for your Q cooldown. The only thing you got to watch out for is that his ult cooldown is a lower cooldown than Zonia's, so he has like a 30 second window where he can jump on you, and you won't have Zonia's later on in the game. Then to put Urgot in medium, maybe easy. But Urgot's kind of like the same thing where he's like shorter range, so you can get like auto cues off. You just got to make sure you don't get grabbed by him, like his little flip thing. If you get hit by Nasus, or not, fuck, I was looking at the chat. If you get hit by Urgot flip, you're going to lose, regardless of what you do. But then again, like it's super short range. You can see it coming. The only thing you got to watch out for is if you get hit by a Q. If you don't get hit by the Q, you shouldn't get hit by the flip. So then it's just kind of like a farm matchup. Maybe you can whittle him down and get a kill. Or like push some sh movement on him if he gets antsy and tries to kill you with an all-in or something. But I don't think it's too bad. If you get ganked against Urgot by somebody who has set up, you're like you're guaranteed to die though. I mean, I don't see it, but I'll just put it there. Nobody really plays Viego top anymore. But I'll put him in there. Put him in easy and give a little tidbit. He's like, his range is too low. He's focused around his auto attacks. You can just stand in his creeps for his W. Like his E's always going to be up and it's going to be annoying and he's going to try to like, he's going to farm with his Q's. So he's not going to be hitting Q's on you. It's just kind of like a free lane overall. You just got to watch out for like an all in randomly or something. Like if it's even, full health to full health, and you like walk into a bush and he's standing there, you're probably going to lose. But besides that, you're fine. Um, Bye Vlad. I'm going to put Vlad, I guess in medium. I'm tempted to put him in easy, but I'll put Vlad in medium. I think the lane is super free in the early levels. It can be like a little difficult to push out, but like you should be able to dominate that lane in the early levels. And then once Vlad hits around like seven ish, if you guys are even, I think the lane turns to his favor probably at level seven when he gets that fourth point in Q. But it's so telegraphed when he wants to Q you because of the bar that's under his health bar. I don't know why they did that, but you just have to make sure you don't walk up and get hit by his like empowered Q. And then it's just kind of like a farm lane. Even if he uses like a regular Q on you, if you go like auto Q auto with his regular Q, you win out on that, especially in the early levels. Yeah, medium. I don't know. The more I think about it, I think the lane is free for Teemo. 
You just gotta watch out for later. Bola bear. I mean, nobody plays that, but I'll put it in very easy. Just like he's got like the same thing as like Garen going on, where like he has to run at you. You can blind his stun thingy. You know, like there's no way you're gonna get hit by his little like lightning bolt thing that he drops because he like falls it down from the sky like a minute before it happens. He has pretty good gank setup and tower dive at six. But like you should be way ahead for that. And if he's gonna tower dive you, you should see it coming. You can just go stealth under the tower. And let's say if a jungler that can reveal you, there's nothing they can do. Monkey Kong. Put Monkey Kong in E in medium. Um he can he can jump on you in the early levels with E. He jumps on like directly on top of you and you don't have Q up. You're probably gonna lose out a little bit, which is why I start Q against Wukong, because I expect him to use E on top of me. And then at level six, he's level six all in is super good. But you can control the wave to a place where he can't all in you with six. And that's how you beat Wukong, in my opinion. And it's not difficult to do because your wave clear is way better than Wukong's. Since you're range and he's not, you can control it to a freeze, which is what you want. I think Yasuo is difficult. I think he gets on you too easily. I think his wind wall, if he plays around it well, is super impactful and really difficult to deal with. I think his wave clear is good. I think he can farm quickly. His passive shield definitely helps a lot of the a lot of the damage that Teemo does to him. I think against Yasuo, what you want to do is let's say two waves are coming and they're by both towers. You want to be up in Yasuo's face. Because if Yasuo doesn't have creeps to play with, you win. But if he does have creeps to get his stacks off and like dash in and shit, you're gonna lose. So you always want to try to fight Yasuo away from creeps. Same thing with Irelia. I think Yone is a worse version of Yasuo for the Teemo matchup. He can still, eh, probably even easier than that. Let's put it down here. I don't know, Yone just, like, he's too squishy. Um, His Q is super telegraphed. His E, like, you're going to see it coming from a mile away if he's going to try to EQ you. Like, dodging his ult is pretty easy. His W is, like, on a really fucking long cooldown. It's hard to land on you. Yorick, I know a lot of you guys don't be liking my boy Yorick. I don't really like Yorick either. I think the whole Yorick thing is, does Yorick land E on you? The answer is yes, you're going to lose. If, he's, if his goals jump you, you're going to get your nuts slapped. You're going to take a gazillion damage. But it's so hard to land that thing. It's so hard to land Yorick's E. Also, if he doesn't have minions shoveled, his E won't even do anything. So it's super easy for Teemo. He has a giant window where Yorick has to shovel minions. And you can play as aggressive as Teemo as you want. I guess we can put Akshan in because I've seen it a couple times. I think Akshan is pretty easy. You know, like, he's based on auto attacks. The only thing is, like, he's got his Q, and he's got his passive. So, like, if he procs passive with Q, like, it's actually, like, a lot of damage, and he gets that shield. It's kind of hard to notice, but it actually helps a lot. And then Akshan has a good build path for Teemo, because he can go Wits End early. And then once he has that Wits End done, you gotta be kind of, like, careful. If he goes Shield Bow Wits End, it's really difficult to deal with him, actually. Because you're not gonna burst him, and then once Blind is out, he probably beats you from then on. I don't want to do the... I don't want to go back and do like the really jank top laners. Like I've played against Azir top before. I've played against LeBlanc top before. You know, I've played against like Lissandra top. I've played against like these mid laners who decide like, hey, hey like I'm going to play my weird mage mid top lane. But, uh, you know, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to take up time in the video. So let me just like do a really quick run through all the champions here. A bunch of junglers, some supports. Nobody really plays J4 top. Katarina's weird. Ozix is weird. Miles is weird. Nico is weird. He's weird if they pick Swain or Syndra. Shaco top. Fucking easiest lane ever. I think that's about good. I think I'm gonna call it there. Here's the uh here's the tier list if anybody wants to look at it. Victor? Oh yeah, you guys are right. People do play Victor top. It hasn't it hasn't really been a thing for a while, but like it used to be a lot more of a thing. I never liked playing as Victor top. But I don't think it was too bad. Victor's thing is, like, he's never going to kill you. And he shouldn't kill you. And you have, like, such good windows to, like, play aggressively into him. And you can play super aggressive level 1. Where I think Victor is gets playable because of that. I mean, once he gets Everfrost, it's fucking doomed. Because he Everfrosts, puts his W down. You're going to get stunned by his W. He's going to put ult on you. But, like, by then, lane phase is over. And you shouldn't be dealing with Victor or trying to kill him anyways. 